BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Physics. A few more things about materials. This is just to finish off the materials topic. Uh, there's a few more bits and pieces on the specification which I haven't covered, which you need to know, and I'll talk about here. A few more things about materials. First of all, fatigue. Now, the word fatigue usually means tiredness. Now, do materials get tired? Well, if a stress is applied repeatedly, again and again and again and again, okay, over many, many cycles, after many cycles, for example, it might be uh, a pair of shoes. Every time you use a pair of shoes or a piece of machinery, again and again, uh, a pneumatic drill, uh, after many cycles, the material may fail. For example, it may crack, even if the stress is below the breaking stress. And that is called fatigue. Uh, why? And it's to do with something called micro cracks. Tiny, tiny little cracks may form. And then each cycle, each time the material is stressed, the cracks get bigger and bigger. And then eventually it fails. And that's fatigue. So when a material fails uh, after repeated cyclical stress, that is called fatigue, even if the stress is below the breaking stress. Creep. Uh, creep. To creep means to move slowly. Uh, and metals can do that. Uh, at very high temperatures and stresses, uh, this can cause creep in metals. Over a long period of time, uh, it's as though the metal flows like a liquid, but very, very, very slowly, and then eventually it may fail. For example, these blades are on uh, some kind of a turbine, perhaps in a jet engine, and it gets very, very hot, and there's very, very large stresses, and over a period of time, the metal may actually start to flow slowly like a liquid and then eventually fail. It may crack, and that's called creep. Now, look at this graph. This is a, a force extension, not stress strain, but force extension graph for a ductile metal, for example, copper. Now, I've already told you that for a spring, uh, the force extension graph, the triangle, is the energy stored. Now, for a ductile metal, if you go past the yield point, if you go past the elastic limit, you don't get all of your energy back, okay? It's not stored energy. You lose, uh, well, energy is dissipated as heat. Energy is transferred to heat. We lose it. It is not recoverable. We don't get the energy back. The work done during plastic deformation is not recoverable. Why? Because we're doing work breaking bonds and we don't get that work back. The deformation is permanent. You end up with a permanent deformation because you've gone past the yield point, the elastic limit, and you don't get all of your energy back. If you look at the different colors on the graph and what the areas represent. Um, a special case of that is with rubber. This is for a rubber band, loading and unloading a rubber band. Uh, and what's interesting in this case is that the rubber band will return to its original length. In other words, it will be elastic deformation, but again, we still lose energy. We're not actually breaking any bonds here. What's happening is that the, the rubber molecules, the long chain molecules, rub against each other when you stretch it uh, and that friction uh, produces heat energy uh, and so we lose some of the energy. Again, we do more work than we get back, okay? Uh, the deformation is not permanent but we still lose energy uh, and this has a name, it's called hysteresis. Hysteresis, the shape of this graph, it's called a hysteresis curve, apparently because it looks like a uterus. Okay, that's interesting. 
Uh, okay, so that's all of the materials. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. A uh, bit of fluid mechanics coming up very soon.